Previously on Two Up and Overloaded. We were riding our KTM 250 adventure motorcycle in East Malaysia, journeying through a region that is famous for its natural beauty. And we were about to enter one of the world's largest caverns, Nia Caves which is also home to some of the oldest human remains of Southeast Asia. And besides its incredible history, Nia Caves is also massive. Like, on a world record-breaking scale, big. Like, even the big room of the Carlsbad Caves in New Mexico could fit neatly inside. We are talking about a cave that is breathtakingly enormous. Not surprisingly, Nia Caves are located very near to the most extensive cave system in Asia, the Clearwater Cave System, which includes the Mulu Caves and the Sarawak Chamber, which is the largest known cave chamber by area in the world. And even though the Sarawak Chamber is only accessible with a permit and by boat or plane, neighboring Nia Caves are accessible to tourists like ourselves, and we could get there by motorcycle. So we knew we simply had to go and see if these caves were really as impressive as everyone said they were. Hey everyone, nice to have you here. We are Tim and Marissa no tear. I ride in the front and I'm in the rear. We travel the world and we pack too much gear. Oh. All the places we'll go Through rain and through sleet and through mud and through snow Oh, all the, the things, things we'll see. see We've been to a country or two Or three Oh, all the, the fun we've, we've had You have you along would make us real glad So give us a like and, and hit subscribe To join us along our epic ride We got to the entrance and we parked the motorcycle, but as we found in a couple different places here in East Malaysia, they make you go online to register. Oh my goodness, getting tickets was not easy. <laughs> so there's nobody else here, but they're like, you have to register on your phone. Normally it's for other Malaysians that yes. are filling out this paperwork and like there was no like America or United States for like the country of origin. And then we register on our phone but because we're not Malaysian it's like state is not entered. It's like there wasn't even a state category. It was one of those technological It's like things. using the self checkout lane at a <laughs> convenience store. And like none of the things registering and then being like, hey, can you just ring yeah. me up? And they're like, no. Nah. And all I want, like I had the money and they had the ticket and it was just so difficult to be like, I'll just trade you, dude. I know, <laughs> well, just uh, trade me that little piece of paper for this paper and just let us in. So oh, whatever, we got it, we're good. Yay. But through effort and Marissa's patience, <laughs> yes. we, we got ourselves officially registered as visitors to the Nia Caves. Woo! <laughs> to the caves. Finally, to the caves. But first, to, to the ferry. We have to go to the jetty and take a little tiny boat across a little tiny river to get to a three kilometer hike to the caves. So, here we go. So right away, we had to take a ferry that would go from one side of this little river to another. And before we took the ferry, we were forced to watch an introduction video, which was also a safety video. And of course, you know, we watched these things, but I thought, wow, that seems a bit excessive. Yeah. They were talking about bringing your own med kit. Flares. Things for um, these really serious emergency circumstances. I was like, I think I'm gonna yeah. be fine in the cave. Little did I know that that safety video actually had true. it right. In my mind, I was like, well, the ticket buying is pretty ridiculous. This video <laughs> we're watching is pretty ridiculous. And then I, there's like this little ferry we need to take. Like I could literally throw like 
a grain of grass across. There's not a grain of grass. A stone to the other side. <laughs> yeah. You know? My expectations were dwindling quickly. Yes, they were. <laughs> The journey has begun. <laughs> we have left port on this day. Yes. Land ho, I say. <laughs> Land ho. <laughs> Jack Sparrow was there waiting for us. <laughs> oh my gosh, that ferry was at ridiculous. At the Black Pearl. Yeah, I think they really need to build a bridge. <laughs> I cannot wait to feel the earth beneath my feet. <laughs> my sea legs may lead me astray. <laughs> I think if we ran fast enough. I know we could probably skip across this. <laughs> 45 second boat ride. That was definitely the fastest boat ride I've ever been on. No, that was the slowest boat ride. <laughs> the shortest, shortest distance. Shortest distance. Thank you. Terima kasih. And then our jungle walk began. got to the slipper path. <laughs> slipper path? Yeah, most people they're like, oh, you need to wear like good hiking boots or at least like tennis shoes <laughs> or something. But this, it said, this is a slipper path. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have slippers. It wasn't in the instructional video. How are we to It another? wasn't. <laughs> So this path actually started off on firm ground, but eventually turned into a boardwalk that was hovering over a wetland swamp jungle forest. Definitely felt like we were in The Witcher or something. Like there could be <laughs> yeah. some crazy little monsters that popped out, but it was absolutely beautiful. And I have never seen more butterflies in my life than in Borneo. These forests are full of gorgeous, big, beautiful butterflies just fluttering everywhere. The sun would shine through the trees. Everything is this golden green color. And even the water is sparkling in the sunshine of the swamp. You'd think it would be dark and dingy, but no, it was beautiful and glorious. This jungle is amazing. All these vines kind of look like snakes though. A little scary. So we are headed right now to the Great Cave, which is the largest cave. Yeah, it is great. It's the largest cave of the cave system here. It is also the place where they found a 40,000 year old human skull. So this is not just a nature reserve with a cave, but this is an archeological park as well. They have found other remains of prehistoric man, uh, such as stone tools, and I believe a fire pit where they would cook their food. There is also another cave here called Painted Cave where there are paintings, depictions of what they say is boats bringing their souls, the souls of people and there's different animals to the afterlife. People have said that it's almost impossible to see these paintings anymore, but that is still really, really cool. So the water started getting deeper and deeper. At one point in time, we're walking on these boardwalks and I was thinking, wow, this has turned into a little bit of a river. There was even a slight current to it. And these boardwalks were just built over this river swamp forest. Nailed it. <laughs> Jungle. Yeah. <laughs>
after even more beautiful walking down like this boardwalk that, you know, some moss had been growing on it. It kind of had like, you know, green tint to, to the boards because they're just out there in nature, in the weather, getting weathered and getting, you know, uh, eroded like the caves themselves. This is true. But then we started noticing these limestone crags sticking up out of the ground. Looking like, you know, dragon teeth shooting yes. into the sky. So incredible. So this is actually super cool. We're on our own little private boardwalk. We get all these little crazy rock formations sticking out. Yeah. And then behind us are like these cliffs of Dover that you won't be able to see in this, but it's absolutely huge cliffs. Awesome, so cool. And we had no idea that this little boardwalk walk was going to be, what was it, three meters? That doesn't seem nearly long enough. Kilometers. Kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> After that, but very rapid. I, know, I, like, I don't know if we can make the three, three meter. meter boardwalk. <laughs> but we were having a fun little adventure and it was really, really cool. Uh, we love adventures like this. We love finding the little hidden gems within countries and, and places and being blown away. And we love sharing those adventures with you guys. We've had a lot of inspiration in the past, let it be from Sam Manicom or you know other people riding around the world on motorcycles. Uh, Road Dog Publications is a great source for where a lot of, of these authors have collectively all come together and are printed in the United States. And it's an amazing list of just motorcycle adventurers, people telling their story. You can scroll all the way down to all, through all these books to see if anything captures your, your eye or your interest or your, your spirit of adventure. And it's all started and founded by our dear friend, Michael. So please check out RoadDogPub.com. So this boardwalk had a lot of really great features to it, not just the natural features, but they built little places to stop. You know, it was a three kilometer walk through the hot jungle. Yeah. Even though we were loving every second of it, it was nice to take a little break and I could see that if it was raining, this would be perfect. It was either a small crocodile or a giant lizard. <laughs> they also had this way station where things broke off in, in a fork ways. where one of the paths went to an Ivan village and the other path led to the Nia caves. I knew that ahead, eventually we would get to something called the Great Cave. But before we arrived at the Great Cave, there was another cave, which technically is not a cave, it's a rock like overhang. Awning, yeah. yeah, and this was called Trader's Cave. And it was full of scaffolding. These old wooden beams that they had used long ago for their bird nest harvesting. So this scaffolding was built a long, long time ago. This is not new. It's because people used to live in this cave. They were trying to get bird's nests to sell. They were trying to mine things. This is called Trader's Cave. There are these little birds called swiftlets that make nests up in caves and cliffs. Using and their spit? Yes, the nest is made out of their spit and people would collect these nests and sell it to the Chinese for their traditional medicine because these bird nests are said to have health benefits. You can smell the bats. It smells like a zoo, like strong, pungent monkey smell. Oh man, you can hear him too. <sighs> and then there's another, like, you know, it, it was almost like a subway entrance. <laughs> <laughs> The first thing we hit was the smell of 
a million bats because yes. they each individually bats don't smell but collectively it's like the no tier family it's like when all my brothers are together <laughs> there's a little bit of a stench these bats oh my goodness well they were stinky and we couldn't hear them yet but we could just smell i mean i knew it had to be bats it's that smell of like monkey stink yeah right that's super pungent and it's already hot and humid out and it just kind of hits you in the face it right sure in the does. nose <laughs> absolutely and finally we climb up and over and around and we are confronted with the great cave I call it grand. Yes. Or big in Malay, it's called something besar, which means Gua big. Besar. Gua besar. Gua I'm gonna guess it means big old cave. <laughs> yes. The Great Cave, or Gua Besar in Malay, is truly great. With a size of 10.5 hectares, you enter it through a gaping 250 meter wide cavern mouth. That's 820 feet. The roof of the cave is covered in millions of bats. You see them, you hear them, you smell them, and worst of all, you feel them pooing on you. There is also lots of human remains in this cave. In particular, a Paleolithic human skull, nicknamed Deep Skull, which dates back to more than 40,000 years ago. First discovered in 1958, these are the oldest authenticated modern human remains in all of island Southeast Asia. It is simply fascinating to think that the middle-aged woman of Deep Skull lived in this very cave. She may have stood right where we were standing. In addition to Deep Skull, there are 25 human burials dating to the early Holocene and over 200 burials with Neolithic material culture, comprising the largest Mesolithic and Neolithic cemeteries in island Southeast Asia. We also noticed a wooden house built inside, along with more scaffolding poles, stretching up to more than 60 meters high into the cave, nearly 200 feet. These are the remnants of the old swiftlet nest harvesting industry. These bird nests would be collected by the local Penan people and then sold to China where they are still used for traditional medicine. Some evidence suggests that the Penan people have been harvesting bird nests as far back as the Tang Dynasty between 600 and 900 CE. Even up until the 1960s, the Penans were the sole harvesters of these swiftlet nests here, selling them straight to Singapore for processing and export. And so these structures are the ghostly remains of that industry. So we made it to the, uh, the gallery of the Grand Cave. Great Cave. The, I, I upped it. <laughs> it was grand indeed. It's absolutely beautiful. And this is usually the furthest that most tourists penetrate into the, the depths of the cave. Yes. I mean, when you stand in that grand cave, you've got... <laughs> yeah, upgrade. <laughs> great cave. When you stand in that great cave, you've got the sunlight streaming in from one side of it, and then the other side leads into this dark blackness. Not only that, but there are tons of stairs that go yeah. up and up and up. It's super hot, super humid, and you are just engulfed in this bat stench. The bats were actually pooing on us. It was coming yeah. from the ceiling of the cave. It was not just like cave water dripping down. It was bat poo dripping onto us as we stood there in this cave. And so, I completely understand that a lot of people did not carry on further into the cave system. Guano showers is not really a, <laughs> something on the brochure. People are like, oh, hey, you want to take the guano shower tour? You know? <laughs> guano is 
the bat poop. Is the bat poop. <laughs> There was the curtain of darkness and stench and heat, and we said, we shall forge on. Yes! And I had a hat, and Marissa did not. I did not! <laughs> so, but I was like, let's go! Let's do this! Whoa! Next time, there is so much more to this cave system to explore, giving us glimpses of both glorious heaven horrific hell. But that will all be in the next episode. So thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you liked it. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Ding, ding. And if you've been enjoying all of our videos and travels through Southeast Asia, please check out our Patreon page in the link in the description below. For as little as a buck a month, you can get our videos ad-free and early, as well as a bunch of behind the scenes and sneak peeks of what we've been up to, and a postcard from random spots of where we've been around the world. So uh, yeah, we would love to have you along in the, the deep dive behind the journey, behind the scenes. And a huge thank you to all of our current patrons. Uh, we love you. We thank you for the support. And thank you for getting us to wonderful places like this. And yes. sometimes we get pooped on in your name. <laughs> and sometimes we ride down beautiful beaches in your name. And so it's a, a nice spread. <laughs> so thank you for all of the support. And uh, we, we hope to see you guys further down the road. Thanks for watching this video. And we'll be seeing you next time. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Peace. We set course on, uh, I think it was a Thursday. We set sail <laughs> around like 9, 9.04 a.m. And around 9.04 and 30 seconds, we made it to the opposing side of, of the river. That's right. And our ferry had come to its end. It is. <laughs> this is true.